friends and neighbors. Welcome to the neighborhood where people choose to smile. It's a beautiful day, won't you stay for a while? I'm happy in this beauty wood, it's neighborly and kind. Of all the neighbors in the world, I'm happy that you're mine. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Oh, while we're together, we'll laugh and we'll play. Won't you be my neighbor today? Hello friends and neighbors, thank you so much for choosing to spend some of your day with me in my neighborhood. It is a beautiful day, I have a lot to talk about today, but before we do, let's say hi to Tommy the Turtle. Hello Tommy, he looks pretty hungry to me. Okay, today we're going to talk about things that you are good at. And we're also going to talk about building things, and then we're going to go visit someone that I have known almost all of his life. What are you good at? What are you good at doing? Maybe, maybe you're good at playing an instrument, or maybe you're good at taking care of your cat, or maybe you're good at writing stories, maybe you're good at drawing pictures, maybe you're good at doing things on a computer, Maybe you're good at putting things together. Maybe you can look at a pile of Legos and see what you're going to build and what you can build before you put it together. Today, we're going to go visit a friend of mine who is really good at building things out of wood. Can you think of something in your house that is made out of wood? Like, where do you eat dinner? We usually eat at our dining room table, and our dining room table is made out of wood. It's made out of kind of wood called oak. And our floor, the floor in our house, is made out, out of wood as well. It's also made out of oak, and this barrel, this side table that I use each week, it is made out of wood. And the box that I put things in is made out of wood. My guitar is made out of wood. This chair that I'm sitting in, you can't see it. But underneath the fabric and the cushions, there's wood in there. And the trunk that I sit on when I come in is made out of wood. And the base to Tommy's tank is made out of wood. There are a lot of things in our world that are made out of wood. And do you know where wood comes from? Well, it comes from the lumber yard, sure. But before that, it comes from a tree. And so I have a piece of wood here. This is a a piece of a maple tree that we cut down because it was starting to die and it wasn't safe anymore. It was going to fall over. So we cut it down and we will use it to burn during a campfire once it's dried out a little bit more. But it's wood just like this that my friend John, who we're going to go visit, uses to build things. It doesn't look like logs when he gets it. It goes to a sawmill first, and at the sawmill, they cut it into what's called rough boards. They're not smooth, but they're shaped more like a board. And then John uses tools to turn that wood into things like tables and desks and shelves and cabinets and trunks. And he builds all kinds of things, and I can't wait for you to meet him and see the things that he creates. Now, do you have tools at home? I brought some tools to show you. Maybe, maybe you have a hammer. This is my hammer, it looks like this. We hit and pound nails with it and put nails in and those sorts of things. And we can use the claws on the back to pull the nails back out if we need to. And I have a saw that you would use to cut wood. You, this is called a, um, a hand saw. You use it by hand and then I have a screwdriver as well that we use to put screws into things. And there's several different kinds of screwdrivers. Now, all of these are what we call hand tools because you, you use them with your hands and they don't require any sort of battery or electricity. But I also have tools that you plug into the wall or use a battery and are much more efficient. They work much faster but you have to be really careful. Anytime you're using tools, you need to be very careful. You need to make sure that you're safe. Make sure that you're wearing safety glasses and ear protection if it's loud and 
um, sometimes gloves and you know if you're swinging a hammer at a nail if you're holding a nail you want to make sure that you're not hitting your fingers or hitting your thumb so my friend John you're gonna see at his shop he has really big tools they're really big fancy efficient industrial tools that work really fast and help him to take wood from a rough cut board and make it smooth and make it square and then help him turn it into furniture so i think we're just going to go ahead and head on over to john's furniture shop and i would love for you to look around your house and figure out what it is in your house that is made out of wood i bet that there's more things there than you might think because remember this chair it doesn't look like it's made out of wood but if we turned it over underneath you can see that the structure is built out of wood and i don't know about you but i think that wood can be very beautiful i think that you know when you put a finish on it you put a stain on it it can be very pretty and very beautiful and i want to show you before we go i want to show you the wood on the back of my guitar because it's not only it's not only something that sounds good but i think it looks really pretty too and different woods look differently they have different grain that's that's those are the lines that you see in the wood my guitar is made out of maple and our floor is made out of oak and so look around your house see what it is you have there that's made out of wood we're going to go to john's shop and we're going to learn how it is he takes these boards and turns them into furniture. Let me grab my hat, let's go. I'll see you there. Hey friends and neighbors, here we are at my friend John's wood shop where he makes furniture. I can't wait for you to meet him. Let's see if he's here. Hey, hey John, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm fantastic, Good. I'd like you to know my friends and neighbors. Hi guys, I'm John. Can we come in? Yeah, come on in. Come on guys. So John, Hello. Relic Tables, Yes. this is where it happens. This is the workshop, welcome. Uh, thank you very much, I love it, I love the shirts. Thank you. Uh, your uniform. Keep it professional. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so tell us, how did you get started? Well, I actually found a coffee table that someone was getting rid of and I just wanted to fix it up and I, I just had a really good time doing it. And okay. so I built another one after that and I just started selling them online. So you fixed one yeah. and then you built one from scratch. Yep. And that just snowballed into this. Yeah, I was having a good time and, and really and I was just kind of surprised at how good they were selling online. I started a little side business in the evenings and And here you are full here time. Here we are. Six, with employees. Yep, six years later, two employees and Wow, that's that's amazing. Fun. Thank you. So I'm looking around here and I see that you're not just doing coffee tables. I mean obviously no. you've got this awesome live edge coffee table. Thank you. And what tell us what live edge means. Um, so live edge is just when the, the we use boards that um, where the, where the bark would be on the side of the board. Okay. A lot of times you would cut that off if you're going for a really clean, sleek look. But um, especially nowadays, people are starting to really like the live edge. So you can use those boards, and okay. you, you don't really have to cut them off. That's straight. very cool. Yeah, this is where the bark would be, and so you just okay. get rid of the bark, uh, sand smooth. Very that's organic well. shape. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Made it, not me. So, okay, that's really yeah, cool. That's so we got so you're doing coffee tables, and then. This is a dining table, I assume. Yes. And the table. desk behind me. That is the oak kind of L-shaped desk of drawers. Okay. Drawers. And that's a hall tree. Yes. Yeah. This goes if you go in your garage or in a mudroom. Has hooks inside for jackets and things like that. Okay. So this looks like it's in process. What's this going to be? Yes. This is part of a table. This is the base of a. It's a solid maple table. Um, it's another dining table, a little bit smaller than that one. Okay. Uh, and actually, we actually we're working on this today, so I have the top over there. Well, let's go over there and see the top. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, John, so this is the top to that table that's in process. Yes. Yeah, we All just right. did this this morning. Got that what kind of wood are we looking at here? This is solid maple, one of my favorites. It actually, it stains really good and um, it's just really a nice wood to work with. Awesome. Now, I assume, I mean, I can see this is not one board. No, this is six boards that we've just, it's gone through a milling process, multiple machines. Um, and to get us to this stage where we're just going to need to do a lot of sanding. Okay. Now, what did the board look like when it got here? This is a little example of the board. It's really rough. Um, it is pretty you can rough. You see all the saw marks. 
All right. So this is before any milling. This is just how we got it from the lumber yard. Gotcha. Let's let's take a little closer sure. so that our friends and neighbors can see what it looked like. So you can see it's a rough board, and you can see some of the saw marks here. So you've put it through a lot of things, as you said, to get it smooth, parallel boards that you can glue together. Yes. Now, do you just glue the boards, or is there something internally holding them together? Well, you, a lot of people would just glue. You can do that. There's also a method called biscuit joinery. Okay. People can use dowels. Um, the one that we like to use is called a domino. Okay. Um, this is a little hardwood. This is beech wood. Uh, we have a tool that will plunge holes in between these boards. You can see there's lines where they all are. Okay. Um, and then this is actually inside, completely hidden. Um, and it just kind of adds glue, more gluable surface. It helps. Uh, it uh, adds some strength. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. That's what we want. Very cool. Strong tables. Well, that, this is awesome. It's so exciting to see the process. Cool. Yeah, happy to tell you more about it. Okay, John, this thing right here, this fascinates me. Um, all the numbers. Yeah. Tell us what's going on. Well, when you, this is a specific type of wood. This is all pine. Um, and pine, notoriously, when you buy it at the store, it just has a lot of moisture content. And that's okay for construction, uh, if you're building a deck, things like that, framing a wall, but it's not good for furniture. And so we use pine for some of our more rustic style furniture. And so um, we have this tool that okay. will measure the moisture content. Measures the moisture. And so is that what these numbers are? They tell us how much moisture is in the wood yes exactly. okay that is the percent of the moisture in the wood excellent so how do you measure that you said this tool yeah how does it work uh, it has these it has these little prongs on it okay um, and so when we buy the boards that's my big stack and we go through one by one and we'll stab it stick it in yep and then we'll take a marker and write it on the end that's uh, fantastic and then you blow some air around it and eventually the numbers will come down to a place where you can use it and it'll so be about how long about how long does it take like if you have a board that has say 16.8 percent moisture right what what's your number like where do you need to be we're trying to get it to down to around 12 percent okay um and so 16 we'll get there in, in a week probably we keep okay. some fans blowing on it um, great thank you so much so absolutely. the maple that you showed us the hardwoods yeah. yes. those you said when you get they're already dry yes that process is already yeah. done exactly those all are right. kiln dried and they're way less than 12 percent anyway so those okay are good to go. that's awesome Thanks for showing us this. I'm just You're I'm welcome. fascinated by sort of the math and yeah. the, the science that is behind this process. Exactly. Okay, John, so take us through this process. You've got a piece of wood. Yep. You're headed to turn it into something you can make furniture out of. Yes. Tell exactly. us what happens. So it really just starts off when we get it from the lumber yard. We have a long board, but that's probably not the right size. We probably need to cut it a little bit shorter to get started. Okay. So we're just going to use this as an example. Uh, this is called a chop saw or a miter saw. Uh, and we just use this to cut it to size. We use just our measuring pull it tape. down. And... Yep, just use our measuring tape, make a mark. We cut it to a rough size, usually just a little bit bigger than we're gonna need. Okay, all right, and where do we go next? Next we go to the jointer. All right, my let's favorite. go to the jointer. All right, so this is the jointer. Yes, this is my favorite machine. Why is it called a jointer? It's called a jointer because it sets up your boards to make good joints. That makes sense. Yeah, there you okay, go. Okay, <laughs> so show us what happens here. Exactly. Um, so basically this has two sides. They look, it looks almost like it's flat, but it's not flat. This side's a little bit lower than this side. Okay. Uh, and it takes a board that's, when you get it, it's rough. See, it's not sitting quite Wobbles flat. a little bit. Yeah, some boards are twisted, some boards have bows in them. And you need them to be square on all four sides. That's okay. the goal, S4S, to, get, to make them able, to, so that you can just build really good with them. Okay. High quality stuff. So this takes, this makes one side completely flat? This actually makes two sides. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to get two of the four when you use this machine. Um, and so this side is a little bit lower than this side. It has these, this uh, rotates with cutters. Um, and so it just kind of shaves off. Of course, it's not on. We'd be using safety protection if we were. Of course. Um, so yeah, so you'll just run through there and it's going to make one side perfectly flat getting a reference from this perfectly flat table. Okay, and then you flip it over and do the other side. Uh, no, actually. So, no? No. Okay. Uh, you actually just get one side like that, that's the face of it, and then you put that up. once you run that through a couple times, uh, you put it up on this fence and you run the edge. The edge? Yep, and this is perfectly 90 degrees, perfectly square, and okay. so you have this perfectly flat surface on there, it's going to be this side and this side, perfectly 90 degrees. And so that's two gotcha. Yep, so that's okay, two Okay, so you have a perfectly sides. flat side, and yep. a perfectly flat edge, yep. and a perfect 90 degree angle. Yes. Okay. You're ready to go to the next thing, which is the, the planer. The planer, let's go to the planer. Cool. Okay, this is the planer, and this gives us our third square side. Yes. 
Okay, I see. It's using the side that you made perfectly flat and perfectly square on the jointer as reference to make that third side flat and square and parallel. Yep. All right, and off to the table saw. All right, John, so this huge thing is your table saw. Yes, one of my favorites also. Now, is it called a table saw because it's basically a saw in a table? Yes. Okay. <laughs> exactly. That's a good all right. Yes. Yep. Excellent. So this is going to give us our fourth square saw. Yes. Um, how does that happen? We're going to make a parallel. We have one and two from over here. We did the third on top. Okay. Uh, but what we don't have is this edge. This edge is still rough, as you can see. Um, and okay. So we're going to make a parallel uh, cut. So we're just going to get. It'll be perfectly parallel with this side that we already have, and we're going to use that. We're going to forget that. We're going to make it on the fence. You can see how already how smooth and flat it is. Now the fence, that's this yes. this thing that you can, I assume, slide that back and forth to set the width of the board? Exactly, yep. There's okay. a little measuring tape down here. Um, and so for this table, for the table that we were making this morning, if you remember, it was the six boards and they wanted it 36 inches wide. Okay. So that's six boards at six inches. So you do a little math there. Exactly. I imagine you do a yep. lot of math. Do a lot of math, but okay. that's pretty easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we're uh, going to cut all the boards at six inches exactly. Okay. So we'll set this to six. And we'll turn on our dust collection, put on our safety glasses, our ear protection, and just run it through. It's going to just take off a little bit until it's perfectly six inches wide. Okay, and that gives us our fourth square saw. Exactly. How, how did you say that again? There was an abbreviation here. Yeah, they call it S4S, square four sides. Excellent. Okay. And then we're ready to glue those boards together and make a team. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking us through this process. Well, this was fun. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's fun. John, thanks so much yeah. for showing us around relic tables and how the process happens. This Definitely. is fantastic. And I understand you've got footage of this act this table actually being made. Yeah, we stopped and some guys were taking videos and we were just using all the machines that we just talked about in, in real action with this exact table. That's awesome. Together. I can't wait to see it. We'll yeah. take a look at that in a minute, friends and neighbors. But I want to know, you know, how did you learn to do all this? You started by putting a new top on a coffee table, yeah. and then you started building coffee tables. Um, did you go to school to learn how to do this, or how did it happen? <laughs> um, no, I, I didn't go to school. I went to school for business, not woodworking. Okay. I really did not know very much about it when I started, honestly. I just knew that it was fun, and I felt like I was getting to use some of my some of the skills that I already had. I like math, I like tools, and just being creative. And so you're kind, yeah. of, you're kind of learning as you go. Yeah, or exactly. Learning as you went. Absolutely. All right. So much so learning, honestly. Are you still learning? At, oh my gosh. I have so much to learn, yeah. All yeah, right. Feeling good though. That's fantastic. Well, it must, it must make you proud to be able to take a piece of wood and turn yeah. it into something as beautiful as this. Yeah, and it's going to last a long time. It's, it's true. Absolutely. Well, I have known you most of your life. Yeah. So you can imagine how proud I am of you, that you're creating these beautiful Funny. things. Thank you. You are very welcome, John. It's, it's been a privilege and a pleasure, yeah. and I can't wait to watch the video of this being created. And thanks again for letting us come to Relic Tales. Absolutely, buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been great to see you. Yeah, same. All right, friends and neighbors, let's head back to my house.
Friends and neighbors, that was fantastic to see how John takes those boards and turns them into gorgeous pieces of furniture. How he uses those machines to make sure that he has four square sides and makes sure that they're smooth and cuts them to just the right length so that he can use them to build those pieces of furniture. And wow, he's really good at that. And you know, I think it's, it's really important to understand that it's good that we're not all good at the same thing because there are lots of different things that we need to do in our neighborhood and in our world and if we were all good at the same thing that wouldn't be very good like if we were all like John good at building furniture we'd have a lot of furniture but there would be a lot of things that we wouldn't have and I think it is so neat I'm so proud of him and the things that he has learned to do it's neat to know someone for such a long time. I've known him since he was a little kid. To watch him grow up and see the things that he has learned to do. I'm excited to watch you grow up too and see what, what it is that you learn to do. And it's exciting to watch as we figure out the things that we're good at. All right, let's sing our goodbye song. Will you sing with me? Bye for now. Take care, my friends. Goodbye for now. I'll see you again. Let's all be good listeners. Let's lend a helping hand. Let's make the world better together. Bye for now. Take care, my friends. Bye for now.